Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shivangi Mishra. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India's budget will be a ray of hope for world, says PM Modi. Dead toll in mosque blast in Pakistan's Peshawar climbs past 95. And Bangladesh secures $4.7 billion IMF loan. Pakistan Sri Lanka still waiting. And now for all the details. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday said the budget to be presented by the Finance Minister on Wednesday will strive to meet the people's aspirations and will be a ray of hope for the world. The government's economic survey report, which is released one day before the unveiling of the budget, has forecast the economy would grow 6 to 6.8 percent in the coming financial year amid a global slowdown. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday said amid global economic turmoil, India's budget will attempt to meet the aspirations of common citizens and will be a ray of hope for the world. Addressing the media as the budget session of the parliament began on Tuesday, Modi said recognized voices in the world of economy were bringing positive messages from all sides. Vishwagi Arthik Parasiti Mein Bharat Ka Budget भारत के सामान्य मानवी की आशा आकांक्षाओं को तो पूरा करने का प्रयास करेगा ही लेकिन विश्व जो आशा की किरण देख रहा है उसे वो और अधिक प्रकाशमान नजर आए a day ahead of the budget's unveiling finance minister nirmala sitaraman on tuesday tabled the government's economic survey which is mainly a review of how the economy fared in the past year the survey states inflation was not high enough to deter private consumption nor low enough to weaken investment it forecasts the economy would grow 6 to 6.8% in the coming financial year slower than the projected pace for 2022 to 23 because of likely damage to exports from a global slowdown at that pace india's economic growth will still be the fastest among major economies india's economy has rebounded since the covid-19 pandemic but the russia ukraine conflict has triggered inflationary pressures across the globe and prompted central banks including india's to reverse ultra loose monetary policy adopted during the pandemic in news from pakistan the dead toll from the attack on a mosque in Pakistan's Peshawar climbed past 95 on Tuesday after more bodies were recovered from the attack site. The attack occurred in one of the most fortified areas of Peshawar, which houses offices of the police and counter-terrorism departments. The death toll from Pakistan's bloodiest bombing in years, which tolled through a mosque frequented by police officers in the city of Peshawar, climbed past 95 on Tuesday. While rescue operations to pull out any survivors was still underway till the last reports came in. Ambulances transporting injured people continued to arrive at a hospital in Peshawar and people were seen thronging hospitals to look for their kin. Ambulances transporting injured people continued to arrive at a hospital in Peshawar and people were seen thronging hospitals to look for their kin. Security around the city was also tightened following the blast. The bomber blew himself up shortly after hundreds of worshippers lined up to say their afternoon prayers, the latest in a string of attacks targeting police. <laughs> The 
No one has yet claimed the responsibility for the attack. Pakistani Taliban, known as Tehreek Taliban Pakistan, has also denied the responsibility. Over the past few months, the law and order situation in Pakistan has worsened with terrorist groups executing attacks with near impunity across the country. More on news from Pakistan. People across Pakistan have slammed the recent fuel price hike by 35 rupees by the government, complaining the petrol prices have gone beyond their reach. Experts believe in coming days the country may witness more price hikes, unleashing a new wave of inflation as the government seeks a crucial IMF loan. The Pakistan government's recent decision to hike petrol and diesel price by 35 rupees has been slammed by people from all walks of life, with some saying they may resort to begging if such conditions prevail, especially as prices of all other essential commodities have already skyrocketed. 58-year-old rickshaw driver Zaheer Ahmed, father of six school-going children in Karachi, said the situation has gone beyond their reach. Things were already difficult, but the recent decisions have literally killed the poor man in the country. There is nothing but misery ahead of us, Ahmed said. Experts believe the country may witness more fuel hikes and increase in prices of essential commodities, unleashing a new wave of inflation in Pakistan. In the latest, the IMF mission chief Nathan Potter on Tuesday began technical discussion with Pakistani authorities in Islamabad for a ninth review of a stalled IMF loan program. The negotiations will continue till February 9. The IMF bailout is critical for Pakistan, which is facing an increasingly acute balance of payments crisis and is desperate to secure external financing, with less than three weeks' worth of import cover in its foreign exchange reserves. Moving on, UNA Chief Martin Griffiths on Monday said that United Nations is pushing the Taliban administration in Afghanistan for more exemptions to its ban on most female aid workers. He also expressed concern that foreign women working for international organizations and embassies could next be targeted. UN aid chief Martin Griffith said on Monday that the United Nations is pushing the Taliban administration in Afghanistan for more exemptions to its ban on most female aid workers. Speaking at a UN press briefing after a visit to Kabul, Griffiths expressed concern that foreign women working for international organizations and embassies could next be targeted. He also said that following his recent discussions with the Taliban authorities, they would create a set of written guidelines to allow aid groups to operate with female staff in more areas with certainty in the coming weeks. The people of Afghanistan depend on UN assistance, 28 million of them, he said underscoring the need for crucial female staff to operate freely. We met with a wide range of Taliban leaders. They consistently gave us this message that um, there will be a place for women uh, working. It's a slightly patronizing message, but it's an important one. Um, and we will see. We will see if that comes to fruition. It's already true that health and education sectors have these exceptions. We want to have it more than an exception. We want to have it as a norm, obviously. But um, there, there is a clear interest, as Yanti was saying. The people of Afghanistan depend on this assistance, 28 million of them. It's the largest humanitarian aid program in the world ever, the Afghanistan program, $4.6 billion for this year, just for uh, our organizations. So uh, we, we wait and see, and hopefully we won't wait too long because uh, every day that goes by without proper functioning humanitarian aid is not a good day for the people of Afghanistan. Last month, the Taliban authorities banned most female aid workers and stopped women from attending university after stopping girls from attending high school in March last year. No foreign government has formally recognized the Taliban administration since it seized power in 2021 with some diplomats saying it must change course on women's rights. 
In news from Bangladesh, the IMF on Monday approved loan of 4.7 billion US dollars to Bangladesh for dispersal starting immediately, making it the first to secure such funds out of the three South Asian countries that applied last year amid economic trouble. The loans are being seen as major win for PM Sheikh Hasina ahead of next elections. Global lender IMF, the International Monetary Fund, on Monday approved a support program of 4.7 billion US dollars at current exchange rates for Bangladesh. Bangladesh will get about 3.3 billion dollars under the IMF's extended credit facility, along with about 1.4 billion dollars under the resilience and sustainability facility, making the South Asian country the first to access the funds under the newly created scheme for climate investments. In a statement, IMF said the 42-month program will help preserve macroeconomic stability, protect the vulnerable and foster inclusive and green growth. Since independence, Bangladesh has made steady progress in reducing poverty and significant improvements in living standards, Antoinette M. Sahe, the IMF's deputy managing director, said. However, the COVID-19 pandemic and subsequent Russia's war in Ukraine interrupted this long period of robust economic performance, she added. The loans are seen as a big win for Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina ahead of a general election early next year and will help the country, which has seen a sharp widening of its current account deficit, depreciation of the Taka currency and a decline in its foreign exchange reserves. In news from Nepal. Top U.S. diplomat Victoria Nuland on Monday met Nepal's top leadership, including Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dehel, to further boost bilateral ties. She also pledged $1 billion in investments in the Himalayan nation over the next five years. The U.S. Under Secretary of State for Political Affairs, Victoria Nuland, met Nepal's Prime Minister Pushp Kamal Dehel and other top political leadership in Kathmandu on Monday and said that Washington plans to invest about $1 billion in the Himalayan nation. Newland in a press conference said the U.S. has historic investments in the Himalayan nation in education, health, agriculture and economic growth. She added that Washington looks forward to deepening over 75 years of ties to promote their shared interest in inclusive development, democracy and human rights, with MCC, the Millennium Cooperation Challenge Compact, to support economic growth. Historic investments here in health, in education, in agriculture, in economic growth. And this time, we were very proud and pleased to be able to talk about all of our projects together for the future. We plan, the United States plans to invest over a billion dollars in Nepal over the next five years in everything from green energy and the electrification of this country. The Millennium Challenge Corporation, or MCC, Nepal Compact was ratified by Nepal's parliament last year, despite China's objections. As part of it, the United States had announced $500 million aid grant to upgrade Nepal's infrastructure, with many wary of U.S. influence in the region. Scores of vintage cars rolled out on the streets of India's Kolkata city this past weekend as part of an annual show. Excitement and nostalgia filled the atmosphere as the gleaming vintage beauties rang in old times. Take a look. Excitement and nostalgia filled the atmosphere as gleaming vintage cars rang in old times at the Statesman Vintage and Classic Car Rally in India's eastern Kolkata city this past weekend. The event, held after a two-year gap due to COVID-19 pandemic, gave vehicle enthusiasts an opportunity to indulge in their favourite addiction and a dose of the old world charm that these vehicles like nothing else embody. Some of the timeless beauties at the event included classic Mercedes, MG Motors, Rolls-Royce and Wolseley. Grandpa, great grandfather purchased it from a person yeah, sometime in the year 1953-54. And in the year 1965, I received the car from my father, who used to maintain this car. Thereafter, I am maintaining it. 
Hundreds of auto enthusiasts gather every year to witness and take pictures with the bygone beauties at the Vintage Car Rally, organized by the Automobile Association of Eastern India. Many a head turned as the cars rolled out on the roads of the city. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.